to cope with the intense sensations and emotions of trauma. The survival brain may fragment the experience into what's known as memory capsules. We have two parts to our brain. So we have the older, more primitive part known as the survival brain. And this is the centers lower down. The survival brain communicates with us through neurotransmitters and hormones that release powerful sensations and emotions that help us to take action. They may push us into fight or flight, so we're ready to run away or to take on challenges. This part of our brain is involved in changing our physiology. And it's also involved in what's called implicit memory, where you learn things and store them without needing to bring them into conscious awareness. For example, you may have learned as a small child how to ride a bike, and now you can just jump on your bike and go without needing to think about it. Implicitly, you know how to do this. The thinking brain is the more recently evolved part of our brain, and it communicates with us through thinking and narratives. It's involved with things like planning and reasoning. The memories of the thinking brain are explicit. With the survival brain, you recalled things implicitly, meaning outside your conscious awareness. But with the thinking brain, if we use the example of riding the bike, you could recall that memory and pull it into your conscious awareness. So you might see yourself with maybe a parent or a sibling. You might see where you were and remember the sounds and what the environment looks like. In times of high stress, memories are stored in the survival brain and the thinking brain may actually go offline. And this is why we may find it hard to remember exactly what happened. The survival brain is doing the most learning when you're experiencing the highest emotions. And it may capture sounds, smells, body postures, and sensations in fragments. And these are what is known as memory capsules. They remain active and vulnerable to being triggered until a complete recovery of the nervous system has happened. When they're triggered, the survival brain will project that activation in the mind-body system stored from the past onto the present moment, and you'll respond physiologically as if this is happening today. Say, for example, you have something at work that is bringing up some anxiety. If you trigger a memory capsule, you may find that physiologically you respond as though things are going to fall apart and this moves you into a state of panic. On the other hand, say in a time of conflict, you may be filled with shame and internalize this as your fault and be overwhelmed with a sense of hopelessness. This can shift you into a state where you dissociate from the present moment and from your body. It's memory capsules that make it hard to stay present with what's happening here and now when you face stresses. And they try to take you back to respond in the same way that you may have before. By responding in exactly the same way, the survival brain doesn't get to learn and adapt and respond in a new way. But in that moment, if you can learn to re-regulate your nervous system, if you can discharge that stress activation, the survival brain learns that it can cope with stresses and it will change and adapt to how it responds to stresses. This is why talking about, thinking about, or telling other people about traumatic memories doesn't actually resolve the issue all the time because that involves the thinking brain. What really brings that resolution and recovery to the nervous system is working with the activation that's in the nervous system, engaging the vagus nerve, and helping to discharge that stress activation. As you practice this more and more, you'll develop an inner resilience and a sense of trust, and you will no longer swing between the states of anxiety and shutdown. If this is something that you'd like to learn more about, I'll pop the details below of our upcoming trainings.